Thomas Newman, Let Them All Talk is your fourth film with Steven Soderbergh, but you guys hadn't worked together for, I think, seven years. Uh, so how did this one come about? Uh, I just got a call from him. I was in London <laughs> picking up uh, 1917, and he said he had this movie, and he was interested in me doing it. And it was like uh, like late October of, of 2019, and, and um, we did it in January, February, pretty recent, uh, 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 soon after I got back from London. Wow. So you guys got it in right before COVID. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we were able to record when people could actually smile at each other and you could see their faces. <laughs> well, when the instrument, you know, yeah. bang on drums wow. together. So what what, what did uh, you and Stephen discuss? Like, did, did he have any like particular sound in mind? He really wanted a kind of retro 60s jazz vibe, kind of Neil Hefty, Henry Mancini kind of a thing. Um, and and which was startling to me in a way, but you know I've, I've learned over the years to trust uh, Stephen's judgment about things like that, particularly when it comes to style and approach. Um, and it was kind of fun, you know, being escorted through that door with him, and I, it was a, a real a real fun experience. Yeah, it's it's very retro and like jaunty. It kind of it re <laughs> reminded me of Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that same feel. Um, so, uh, how familiar were you with like you know Mancini and Barry and? Not familiar enough. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's not where my aesthetic would naturally go. But oftentimes that that's that can be a great thing. I mean, I, when I worked with Stephen on The Good German, he wanted the music to that movie to be in a style of Max Steiner. So I was kind of used to these kind of weird stylistic tonal uh, turns that he wanted to take as a filmmaker and you know you kind of have to pay attention to those things um i i don't think he was interested in scoring the movie so much scoring drama as opposed to giving something breezy and light uh that um that the, that the characters could kind of uh step into yeah because a lot of the music is like in transitional scenes it's just like them moving about on on a ship or something and so so what what is that like it's not it's not really like an underscore yeah mon a lot of montages you're right and a lot of little time passing things um so you know i i think you realize that the, the score is not doing what what it would normally do and there were a couple of moments i remember asking steven you know this could really be scored there were a couple of moments that are actually at least one moment that was really a score moment but he was just not interested which is a great thing to kind of witness that you know here's a moment you could take and do something with um but nah not this one hey it's it's less work for you right <laughs> um or, is it not? or did you well, like it is. i mean I, I don't think you ever want to you, you don't want to lie down and, and and let someone just say this is what it should be you want to challenge those ideas and make sure you, and vet them and make sure they're correct um typically with steven you know i, I think he has a real grasp of style and tone so, um, you know, uh, you, you put some things in front of him and see what he says. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, what was it like coming off of something like 1917 with a very heavy, dramatic, long underscore to something like this, where it's very like quick clips? Well, it was slightly shocking. And Sam Mendes is so different in his approach, uh, particularly in post to Stephen, who, who Sam Mendes has a lot to say. Uh, Stephen, there's a lot on his mind, but I think on a certain level, he doesn't want to necessarily share that with you. I think his whole idea is to let uh, a creativity kind of emerge and to kind of guide it and steer it where it needs to be guided and steered, but not to necessarily engage in real specific conversation uh, about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you feel like you're being, you know, he's looking at you, Stephen's looking at you, but he's, he's in a, in a kind of cosmic, you know, from, from, from the clouds or something. Um, so the, there's a tremendous amount of freedom on the one hand that you get from someone like uh, Soderbergh. Mm -hmm. uh, so what kind of instruments, because there, did you use, because there's a very like big band vibe. I think there's like some organs in there. Yeah, so. the organ was mostly, a, you know, a, 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 a Pianist and composer and arranger I've worked with a lot over the years since 1990. John Beasley has a big band orchestra called Munkestra. And um, and it was just a perfect opportunity to collaborate with him, to collaborate with that group. Um, so we, we recorded some basic tracks uh, with some great uh, LA musicians. And uh, Munkestra came in and along the way, um, uh, John did all of the uh, B3 playing, kind of uh -huh. screaming B3 organ. Uh -huh. um, there's uh, one piece, I think it's, Alice's theme with some like vocalizations mm -hmm. over it. 
so one went into that. It was processed. That was all kind of processed voice, uh, kind of done in, in the workshop. Um, and uh, uh, again, adding a sense of real kind of swingle singer kind of style, a real kind of fun, breezy, aerated, uh, fizzy vibe um, that, you know, it, it kind of, I guess it has to live in a realm of irony. Um, and it was interesting to approach it on that level that who, who are these characters? Who is Alice when you meet her, this kind of pompous writer? And, and it, does an audience, a member of the audience, take that character seriously or in, 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 it, it, through, a, through a lens of irony um, uh, eventually? So, so I think that was kind of the approach to, to not comment on character, mostly on situation, but to just let this be a, a prism through which this, th these kinds of uh, people could talk. Mm -hmm. Would you normally approach it like through character themes? Like you want to write something specific for each, like the four of them in, in the film? You mean in, in general? And I think in general, you're always just waiting to see. I mean, I, I take a practical approach always to this, which is here, let's write a theme for a character and see if it holds, see if, if, uh, if the, the vocabulary works. And if you're open and honest and, and you're not trying to defend ideas, you know, you can typically see what works and what doesn't. Um, and you kind of go from there. So I never have a real approach uh, so much as just, you know, grabbing onto ideas, trying them out and seeing if they work and then asking myself if they do, why do they work? And then you, you kind of get from the general to the specific. Mm -hmm. I think for the movie like Let Them All Talk, though, I, I think it would have been wrong to have established themes per character um, just because there was very, you know, it's, it's not a hugely long score. So when it speaks, it has to speak in a style uh, it, and, and it probably wants to mostly be doing the same thing or something like the same thing mostly when when it appears yeah and the film is so like experimental in and of itself so this the score kind of reflects that as well right it does it's a surprising approach which i think is i always kind of get out of steve and it's a, it's a joy to work uh, with him on that level because it's just like wow okay let's try that you know is that he throws these things at you and you're not sure at first if, if it'll work and then it does <laughs> yeah i mean uh I think he typically thinks these things through a lot, and, and sometimes they are surprising choices when he, uh, you know, tosses them out there. Um, but then you go, "Wow, th this is not thoughtless. This is this is uh, re really, uh, you know, something that he's uh, contemplated a lot, and and it's it's a neat idea, and I like it, and and it's it's fun to be led that way. I mean, he's very intuitive. He's pretty quiet. I, I think you know, I've heard people say that what, what you don't want is for Steven to engage you in conversations because maybe that's when things aren't going right. Um, so, you know, typically it's, 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 uh, it's, it's terse conversation and we're, we're uh, dealing with issues of the music. And if there are issues, he'll, he'll certainly, he's not shy to bring uh, th those issues up. Um, but, you know, he leaves you on your own. Did, did he engage in conversation with, with you a lot? As you were working on this, then no, we we, we tip, he typically doesn't. I, I I think that's his style. My sense is is he learned early on that talking. I don't think led you know conversation back and forth didn't necessarily lead to incredibly better results. So I, I think you know I, I think it put him on a path of how how to get through post production and how to um, uh, point you know, your creative people in a, in a certain direction and then just kind of see, uh, step back and see. And, and I, the good thing about that is he's then typically surprised, uh, hopefully positively by uh, where he gets to, as opposed to where he might have gotten to had he led you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, piece uh, in the film was easiest and hardest for you to score? Uh, well, there's some blues. There's some blues that were, are, you know, it's blues. So there's, it's kind of, there's a kind of design to them, um, which, which is fun. I mean, I think probably some of the more uh, uh, complex arrangements were, were tougher uh, just in, in theory to handle. Um, but, you know, we could, we could really let players wail. And that's a great thing just to be able to, to let a musician improvise and is, is just, it's a wonderful thing to behold. So that was Probably the best part is watching John Beasley at, at a B3 uh, Hammond, Oregon, and just being marveling at his uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and hardest or was there not? Well, the hardest, you know, again, is, 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 is <laughs> complex arrangements, you know, montages that are not not necessarily in a blues style that you're, there's real, real composition. You mm -hmm. know, when you're, when you're working on more ambient scores, you know, ambience just come and go. But, you know, 
you're, you're making chord changes, you're making, you're, you're writing melody, you're, you're making arrangements. It's, it's, um, there, there's a lot of writing involved. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, the, the whole uh, score is pretty short. I think it's about like 20 minutes. About, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Is this like the shortest score you've ever done for a film? Um, God, that's a good question. I, I've probably done shorter, uh, but yeah, it, it would have to be kind of, kind of there. Uh, and, you know, as I said, there were moments where I said, Stephen, this could really be scored. Uh, and he wasn't interested. It, it's, it's like he had really thought it through. And this is, you know, wh where the music was going to go. And you kind of love that when someone knows so much about, uh, you know, what it is that he or she is creating that um, you don't have to waste time trying things that have been vetted e either intuitively or in intellectually um, in advance. Mm -hmm. would, would you, do you want to do more shorter scores in the future? You know, it occurs to me that scores are, all, there's a lot of music in movies these days. Yeah. I mean, movies they're are like, like an hour long, long, some of these. Yeah, 80 minutes, you know, work on a Bond movie and it's it's a lot of music, you know, it's a hundred minutes or something. Um, so, and, and a lot of that is just, I, I guess, the nature of how drama is unfolding. Um, so it's, it's, it's often nice when, you know, drama unfolds in a way where music is not required. You know, and and then you feel like you can make. You're not you're not necessarily leading. You're supporting. You're you know you're giving color and 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 depth and and tone to something, but you're not driving it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Tom, uh, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time, and we'll see you back in a little bit.